What is going on y'all? Chris Moses here with Gospel Progressions University. In this tutorial here, I'm gonna teach you uh, about something called, well, the three minors, right? I like to call the three minors. And the three minor skills I'm gonna discuss. Now, if you haven't yet, go check out my website. You can download my free guide. It's called, What Do Pro Musicians Know That You Don't? Now let's move forward and talk about the three minor skills that you need to know. minor scale we're going to talk about is your natural minor. So with three minor scales, you have your natural minor, you have your harmonic minor, and you have your melodic minor. And these scales are played differently in like classical music, but you'll run across them in jazz, you run across them in gospel. And sometimes you may hear chord progressions and changes that are not gospel, but this is more likely where they're coming from. There are other minor scales, but these are the three that are the most commonly used in gospel music. So I'm gonna take, uh, well, let's do the key of C, right? As usual, and the first one we're gonna take a look at is the natural minor scale. So your natural minor is gonna be C, D, E flat, F, G, uh, A flat, B flat, and C, okay? So you're gonna have these keys as your natural minor. And with every minor scale, there's gonna be a major counterpart and vice versa. So of course, if we go one, two, three, and we make the th one, two, three, the three as the first degree, we're gonna have, you know, of course, E, e flat major. <clears throat> Excuse me, so when we're looking at this now, we can look at it as a pers from the perspective of your C minor being the root tone or the E flat being the root tone. You can have a root tone anywhere, it doesn't really matter. It's just a matter of what you're playing, you know, in your left hand or what you're centering around. So we know that we have our natural minor. The second scale we're gonna take a look at is your uh, harmonic minor scale, okay? So the harmonic minor scale is gonna be just like the E flat or C rather, natural uh, minor scale, except for one difference. You're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, all right? Uh, you're gonna have a six, and then you're gonna have a major seven, all right? Just a regular major seven, the B over to the C, so. Or really, all right, so I'm starting my index, thumb, uh, middle, index, thumb, and then my ring finger, middle finger, and then index. So I'm starting my index and on my index. So. so you can just keep going up and down the scale. So finally, we have the C melodic minor, which I fondly and so frequently speak about on this channel. So your C melodic minor is gonna be C, just basically it's just like C major um, with one change. So. We have C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B, and C. So it's pretty simple. If you know your major scale, you just change one note. That's why I always say everything is based around the major scale. So again, your C natural minor is just E flat major starting on the sixth degree, which is C. The C harmonic minor is just the same thing as uh, the E flat major or the C minor or C natural minor scale except for the B. And finally, your C melodic minor it's the same exact thing as the C major scale, except for the one flat, or the one change, which would be the E flat. So you just know your major scales, and then there's less things to have to remember. Now, when we're looking at chord progressions, and we're looking at changes in gospel music, or just in music in general, and when you're first learning how to play, you're gonna hear a chord progression, and you, you're gonna start to learn the key center. You're gonna say, okay, well, I'm hearing, you know, I know there's a difference between C major and C minor, I'm hearing that, I'm picking that up. And I'm also hearing other chords, right? And as you begin to play, when, this is how the fastest way to get stuck in a rut. Learn something and don't move on. Meaning that now I know, you know, what C minor sounds like versus C major. So when I hear chords and I learn something, say in a C natural minor movement, like I may learn this, you know. So I'm gonna use this for every song. You know, I'm gonna hear this uh, sound here, G minor to C minor. And you've learned it. Learn something else so you can build on it. Being that you know the C uh, natural minor, those are chord progressions that you can use with that. When you hear it, uh, hear a pure sound like a you know four, or rather I should say uh, in the key of C minor would be one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, and one, right? 
where you may have something like this. Um, you may even have this movement where you have a, a D minor seven, okay, with an altered five, a change five, a flat a fifth, to a G minor and a C minor. You're not typically gonna hear that. That D minor uh, seven flat five will take you someplace, couldn't take you someplace else, but in essence, you're gonna hear things that sound, have this sound very, very, uh, I don't use the word basic. It could be basic, but the, the sound, it, it doesn't bring too much tension to the ears. You know, you may hear something like this, F, uh, F minor seven, G minor seven, and your E, uh, your C seven, C minor seven, let's just say, or uh, just a C minor. That is from your natural minor. When you hear those things, you're gonna, you know that, okay, this is a natural minor, um, and there's certain chord selections and things that you can actually use. You know that you're, you're, you're kind of, you're within that box, so to speak, but then you're really not. And so this is what I'm gonna show you now, how to get out of that box of, all right, well, I'm playing minor all the time, you know, just diatonically to E flat or C natural minor, right? Moving on to the next scale. This brings us some color into our tones. Now, when you, this is more used whenever you have a minor key, this type of movement. Think of something like Donna Lawrence um, when the saints go to worship and some of the movements that they have in there, right? When you hear them resolving at the end of the phrases, I don't remember what key it's in, but you're gonna hear a lot of, uh, for example, five chords, instead of them being a minor, right? To go to a minor chord again, you're gonna have a major five chord to go to a, uh, the which would be the one chord or your tonic or root, in this case is C minor. Just keep in mind, C natural minor, C harmonic minor, C melodic minor, all have the same tonic chord or root chord. The harmony is what changes. So when we change uh, uh, C, right, natural minor, we get rid of this B flat and bring it up here, it gives it a different sound, right? So we have, we have a nice leading tone, all right, to go to C minor. So now we can learn something different. We want to do the same chord progression that we did before. Um, you know, we can still do the, the A flat, but instead of playing, you know, a G minor seven, we can play a G, um, G dominant seven to take us to that chord, okay? And what's great about the harmonic minor is that it also works for the major. Because remember I said with every major uh, minor key, you have its relative major and vice versa. So when we look at the C harmonic minor, right? Let's look, let's go up and look at the, the uh, relative major, which would be E flat. Notice how that the chords here, or the, or the notes, I should say, almost match perfectly with the natural minor or E flat major. So that gives you some options. We could take the same five chord, being that we have the A flat in here, we can make a diminished chord. A diminished, this would be our A flat diminished, because we have a C going to B and the E flat going to D, all right? And the, the seven for A flat, or the, the minor seven, the G flat going to F. So A flat diminished seventh, And we can play that over a G. And this is all in uh, the C harmonic minor scale. When we look at the scale, it gives us options. Again, that G chord could just be a regular seven chord or even just a regular five chord and it would still sound good. This gives a stronger pull. The B to the C gives a stronger pull than the B flat to the C because of course we can think of you know C major, but we're doing C harmonic minor. So we can take this chord, make it a five chord. This chord now, it changes the G sound and alters it. So we have a G7, but now we have a G7 with something that's altered and changed. This A flat here, giving us a flat nine to C minor. Conversely, we have our E flat, right? E flat major, the same scale we can use, right? 
We can even do this. We can go to the five, one, two, three, four, five, and do the same thing, right? And take that, this here, A flat diminished seventh, and the same thing applies to it because they're so closely related. Every major has this minor, every minor has this major. Now finally, we can take a look at the C melodic minor. C melodic minor. The melodic minor is interesting because it's just like the C major scale, right? Except for the first, the the first, well, the first note. I meant the uh, the third note. You can change that E to an E flat, and now you have a different sound here. With this, you have all kinds of things that you can do because that one note changes it all. But all the other notes, instead of it being a natural minor, our ears are used to hearing, you know, this. We have these two these two notes here. That's altered from the natural minor. We have the A the B. Okay, or we can just say that's basically it starts out as a minor and then it ends as a major. You can look at it like that as well. So we have sounds like you know it's major, major and minor. So it takes it takes a change. You know, if you wanted to get really colorful, you can you can you know I like to do this with certain progressions. If I'm in a minor key, I'll do a. Uh, I'll do something like like this, you know, I'll do like a what's called a minor major seventh chord. Now, something I don't you don't want to overplay that because it can sound too dark. But if you're looking for something different than just a single minor progression, you can do that same chord progression as your four chord. One, two, three, four, F. You have a major. This here, rather, you're not going to play the B flat because you have the C harmonic, C melodic minor. So this is something very simple. There's a bunch of different things that you can do because you do have an F major and a G major in there with a C minor sound. So you can go different directions, and I don't want to play those. It's beyond the scope of this video, but I do want you to understand that you do have options with your C melodic minor, C harmonic minor, and uh, your C natural minor. Whenever you're listening to an album and you know something is in a minor uh, key center or a minor key or a minor chord progression, and then there's some other chords that are being played, fool around with these scales and try to play them over what you're listening to to be able to match the sound and you can derive the chords. Because I can show you chords here all day, what chords you can use, but I want to give you a bird's eye view of what you may be hearing, what's more than likely being played to the albums you're listening to in gospel music and the songs you're trying to figure out, whether they be uh, choruses, hymns, or whatever, that they're going to likely come from these three uh, minor scales. Hope oh, this has been a blessing to you. If you've enjoyed this, you can check out my free guide over at gospelprogressionsuniversity.com forward slash gospel keys pro. And the guide is called What Do Pro Musicians Know That You Don't? God bless you, and I will see you in the next video.